ever feel like everything is just chaos? Like all of a sudden things are just completely falling apart and you can't figure out how to get your life back on track. But did you ever stop to ask who or what exactly it is that you're being productive for? So I've been an executive coach and a leadership consultant for the last 12 years. And when I tell you that I have read pretty much everything that's ever been written about productivity, that's the truth. It begs the question, what does productivity even mean? Recently, I did a deep dive into all the productivity gurus on YouTube. And I'm just gonna tell you, there are elephants in the room that no one is talking about. The damage that it's doing to folks' ideas of who they are and what their value is and what they're supposed to be doing in the world is real. It's real. So one of the things that you'll notice if you happen to do one of these big deep dives into productivity gurus generally is that most of them are white men. Not all, but most. And one of the things that is really clear in the way that they talk about quote unquote productivity is that they've got a lot of help behind the scenes that they're not disclosing. These men are very clearly not raising their own children. They're not out there doing the work of the laundry or the housekeeping. None of them are ever talking about the unpaid labor behind the scenes that keeps their businesses going. They're talking about how to leverage time. They're talking about how to hire people to make your business more productive. They're not talking about the fact that many of these men have wives who are at home raising children, doing the labor of their households, or they're paying household staff to do it. For a lot of us, those of us particularly who are in the crunch generation of middle-aged women who are still raising children while simultaneously taking care of aging parents, we don't have that kind of help. One of the things that's gotten really disturbing to me and the way that I see people talk about productivity is that there's not even really a discussion of why. Why do we feel this need to be so productive? Why are we beating ourselves up about the idea that we're not doing enough? And one of the things that it got me thinking about was why I had left the law, why I stopped being a Wall Street lawyer. And I found this book. It's called The Pathless Path. And this is a book about abandoning and offloading our traditional scripts about the meaning of work. So one of the things that this book talks about is the idea that we're all operating with these learned scripts of what productivity and work is supposed to look like. For instance, when you were younger, you may have thought that the peak of productivity was holding down a very high profile job. Perhaps like me, you thought the peak of employment was working on Wall Street for a very lauded institution. Let me just tell you, I did that and it was miserable. You may think that it's about going to graduate school or getting a PhD or becoming a doctor, that somehow that's the peak of what you can do with regard to work. But even if you aren't that person, my bet is that you've internalized the idea that working 40 or 50 hours a week and getting as much as you can possibly get done in that window of time is how work works and that if we do that everything will be okay and what many of us have unfortunately discovered is that that's actually really far from the truth I want to invite you to think about what you would do with your time if you hadn't internalized the idea that work was supposed to be the center of your universe. Would you actually be worried about quote unquote productivity? Would you actually be trying to figure out how to cram even more stuff into a limited amount of time every single day? Or would you be giving yourself grace? Would you be accepting the idea that we all need rest? That maybe we weren't all put here to just slave away for the uber wealthy in order to make sure that they had even more money. Maybe that's not the point. Now, I don't wanna sit here and claim that we're all not subject to the strictures of late stage capitalism because God knows that if I don't do my job, I've got a real risk of being out on the street with my kids. But within the realm of how we think about work, are we considering the idea that maybe there are other ways of doing this? have 
to point to the fact that there are other countries that have figured this out. Places like Sweden, Finland, Denmark. Places like pretty much all of Europe, where the reality of working life is very different, where the values line up with the idea that your whole life should not center around your job. You should be able to take a month off in the middle of the summer and have it be paid. There are other ways of doing this that here in the United States, we have really barely scratched the surface of considering. When you have the impulse that says that you're not quote unquote being productive, what does that mean to you? And this is a really hard question I think for a lot of us to answer because for me, when I think about it, what I think about is the fact that I can't seem to keep my kitchen counter free of Legos while simultaneously being a single mom taking care of two growing children. And I beat myself up about that all the time. My bathroom counter is a disaster and every time I look at it, I beat myself up about the idea that I'm not doing enough. All of us have a version of this. We have a moment where we look around at our lives and think, I haven't gotten everything done today that I needed to get done. Whose voice is that inside your head though? Are you repeating a tape that the culture has taught you about the idea that if your life isn't perfect and everything isn't lined up and you haven't checked everything off your to-do list, that somehow you're not worthy of something? I've had to really make a serious mindset shift recently about the fact that my value is not attached to how much I produce. My value is inherent. I belong here. And maybe what I'm here to do is create. Maybe what I'm here to do is to help support other people who are going through struggles that I've already lived through and who maybe could learn something from my mistakes and my struggles and the lessons I've taken from it. Maybe I'm not here to just generate more money. Maybe I'm not here to satisfy some standard that society has put on me about what a household is supposed to look like with a single mother, two kids, and no help. Maybe I'm here for bigger things. And that's where the question about productivity becomes far more interesting. Let's just talk for a second about what it actually means to quote unquote produce. Because my mindset about this has really done a full 180 in the last six months. When I think about the idea of production now and what I produce in the world, I'm far more interested in whether or not it actually has an impact for the greater good than whether or not I'm meeting some arbitrary standard that society says I'm supposed to meet. I look at my work right now much more from the direction of what difference am I making? Am I producing creative work that impacts people where they live? Am I doing things with my gifts that improve the world, that make it a better place? Am I working, quote unquote, to make the world that I live in more fair and more equitable and more just and to leave a legacy for my children that they can be proud of? I'm way more interested in whether the work that I'm doing is a means to an end. One of the things that the author of this book, Paul Miller, talks about is the idea that there are other societies that have existed throughout history where work was a means to meeting your needs and not much else. Your whole identity wasn't wrapped up in working for the same company for 40 years or which famous person you had been in contact with or whether or not you had managed to kind of rise to the highest levels of the profession. Let me just tell you, I've done all that. It didn't make me emotionally healthy. What's more interesting is whether or not our needs are met. And if our needs are met, then that should technically and really in a sort of moral way be enough. question becomes, what do we do with our time? Are we using our productivity to make a difference? Are we using our time to connect with our family and our friends and our loved ones? Are we building communities that are sustainable and healthy and that improve people's lives? That to me is really about what productivity should be about in the long run. And I think we really need a really true redefinition of work. So when you listen to all these productivity gurus that are like, get up at 4 a.m., get your morning routine in order, make sure that you've got employees who can leverage the amount of work that you do, and then maybe you too can work a four hour work week. Personally, I want you to think about what that does to the lives of other people. And then I wanna think about what it does to you. Because if productivity is just about making sure that your kitchen counter is clean 
and that you're generating as much busy work in a window of time during the day as you can, and your whole life is valued around how hard you're working and how busy you are, how are you gonna feel about that when you get to be 65 years old? Are you gonna feel like you've invested this one wild and precious life, to quote Mary Oliver, in a way that actually has real meaning to you, real value? Or are you gonna feel like you adopted a script that simply carried you through life in a very default fault, lemming-ish kind of way. To what end? It's time to redefine what work and productivity look like, rather than trying to just generate more and more and more and more and more for meaningless and frankly not very moral reasons. We have to start rethinking what actually is the meaning of enough. And maybe if we can do that, we'll be on a path to creating a healthier society where everyone has what they need, where we don't have massive wealth disparity, where billionaires aren't proposing cage fights with one another because they're bored. Maybe we could actually create a culture that values human connection and creativity and justice. And wouldn't that be so much better? Wouldn't we all be happier and healthier? Wouldn't we all be moving in a direction where we could be proud of what humanity was creating? I think we'd all be so much better off. So that's it for now. <laughs> And by the way, if you're interested in figuring out what life and work and impact means to you, we're running this great new program that starts right after Labor Day called Fall Reboot 2023. So you can check that out at the link below. But in the interim, I want you to think about every time you have that urge to say, I'm not doing enough or I need to be more productive. You know what I kind of want you to do instead? I want you to take a pause and ask yourself what the real value of your one wild and precious life is about. That's it for today, my friends. Make sure you hit that subscribe button and I will see you all here next time.